What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing and I've got a new one for you today. So we're actually going to do an unboxing and compare of these two. Monster Bass versus MTV for the month of December. Let's open them up, check them out, let's rate them, let's see who had the better box for the month. Come along, won't you? Let's do this. Alright guys, first and foremost, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brett, I run Bee Fishing, and if you didn't know, I do a giveaway with the MTV box every month. You need to check out that video. It's the last video um, in my, my channel, the last video I released. So if you want to be entered to that, go check out that video. I give away that each month. We've also got the new subscription with Monster Bass for the next couple months, and we want to do a comparison to see which one is actually better. And there's a couple misconceptions about Monster Bass that are out there. Like namely, it's a, uh, a regional box. Well, they, they give you baits for your region. Yes and no, that's a little bit of a slide of hand, honestly. Boxes are both about 25 bucks each. They're in comparison the same. If you upgraded to the MTB Elite box, you could get the regional bass box, which is $35, I believe, and the Elite box is also $35. But we're going with the Pro box, the middle of the road box, versus the, uh, well, their middle of the road box as well. Same price point, so we're gonna compare those heads up. Let me flip you guys around, let's open these up, let's compare the baits in there, and uh, let's see who had the best box. Come on, let's do it. All right, folks. <clears throat> so, again, this has already been opened and unboxed on my channel, so I'm gonna pull these out first. We're gonna quickly talk about them if this is the first time on my channel. Uh, for you here is the list. So we've actually got a throwback lures trailblazer, which is uh, this guy which is uh, a Very very cheap swim bait. I mean I, I did this on my channel a comparison to like a five dollar swim bait on Amazon It's the same body style. I mean, it's just a different paint job. This is absolute garbage in my opinion But hey, they threw it in the box and they're claiming it's ten dollars. So whatever we're gonna set that one over here to the side black and blue uh, saw crawls, these things are awesome. Got a nice little flange on them. Uh, a great, great Texas rig or jig trailer uh, crawl imitator. Really, really love those things. I believe I had that first on my list over here. Vexens, uh, deep diving crank. When I say deep, this is 10 foot, so not super deep. This is sort of like your uh, middle deep. Um, not your mid cranking, but uh, just slightly deeper than that. I actually like the color. Uh, a little bit of a green brown back translucent nice little bead in there deep thud i think that'll catch you some fish i think i had that one in the middle somewhere and we've also got our guggen baits dragon drop i believe i put these second uh, just because i believe that i mean that that the crawl the crawl bite is going to be on point um it always is in the winter time black and blue is also a really really good color for when you get all that rain that you get in the, the fall and winter um, water gets all stained up that's gonna show through I like the watermelon red dragon drops because the drop shots gonna come into play when they start going deeper once it gets super super cold which is pretty much where we're at we also have a riot baits the probe great little shaky head rig I believe I had this one in between the crank and then I had uh, last but not least the booyah swim jig um, which is this guy it's a half ounce swim jig so it will go deeper it's got a little bitty uh, rattle in there with two BBs you can hear that rattle again I don't fish swim jigs in the winter they're more of a uh, for me they're a spring summer fall type thing uh, winter I, I think there's just not in the grass and I like fishing these swim jigs in the grass a lot of you fish them differently that's just my opinion so I had these actually pretty low over here so that was my order I thought it was a pretty good soft plastic haul the cranks okay these two I didn't really think that one's a good one just not appropriate for this time of year this one's just in my opinion not good at all it's got terrible hooks it's a it's just not very good last but not least in the box we had some stickies wide gap um, extra wide gap hooks the EWG hooks for aught those would go good on several of these things. I think it's a pretty good box. I'll give this I'll give this MTV box a C. It's average. Um, not great, not bad, just average. That one is the one I really have problems with. But let's see at the first Monster Bass box we've ever gotten. Let's see how it compares 
to the MTB box. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna see if it's more appropriate for this time of year, if we think we can catch more fish on it, and just get a comparison of what they're thinking. One thing I do like about monster bass is that they ship much quicker than MTB does. Like I had this thing like on the third day of the month, um, whereas the MTB box is usually between the 7th and the 14th. You never really know uh, when it's gonna get here, but uh, hashtag the better box is what they say. Um, also, just throwing this out there, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Uh, I don't work with any of them. I'm just a paying member, just like most of you guys. Here is what we have in the Monster Bass box. Number one, they've got like the Mountain Dew style Monster Bass sticker compared to the MTB boxes sticker of like a, uh, a Catch Co. You know, I think that's a bass. It looks like a bass based on the the, uh, the fins. It's just that little bubble makes it sort of look like it could have whiskers, but that's a bass. So we're gonna put the stickers up there. We're gonna see if we can find some comparisons, some similarities in the two boxes. So I'm gonna move this to the side and we're actually gonna start running the list right here. It's the standard edition bass box that is $25. Again, the comparable to the Mystery Tackle Box Pro. Um, we've got a River to Sea bait, Strike King, Lunker Hunt, Z-Man, Mustad, and then their secret mission bait. And we'll explain what that is in just a minute. But let's start off with this River to Sea bait. It's a $12 river to sea bait right here they don't exactly tell you what it is they just tell you how much it is that is a rattle trap basically it's your lipless crankbait and uh i think we all know lipless crankbaits work really really well in the fall in the spring and even in the winter so that's a very appropriate bait it's a nice moving bait um let's take a look at all of this it's a heavier bait this is a three fourths ounce bait and it is uh three inches long I can actually get behind this one. And River to Sea actually makes some quality products. Of course, everybody knows the River to Sea Whopper Plopper. It's, that's like River to Sea's, you know, statement bait. That's what they came out with it. Everybody started realizing who they were. It's got tungsten weight force system in it. So if you're into tungsten, there's your, your deal. I don't understand tungsten on a, uh, a moving bait like this. I get it on like, you know, your actual Texas rig weights, but whatever. I don't really care if you save space on this stuff. There's plenty of open areas in there. I do like the little BBs. Uh, I don't know the quality of the hooks, but they look like mustad hooks if I had to guess. Um, they just have that look about them, but I can't put my hand on it. They could be cheaper hooks. You never know, but they look like they're pretty decent. And that is in the minnow pattern. So it's the River to Sea Ruckus um, is what we've got there. So we're going to keep that at the top for the moment just because we have nothing else to compare it to. I like that bait. So far, so good. $5, uh, it was a Strike King bait. So let's find a Strike King bait in here. All right, little square bill. It's like a uh, sexy chartreuse color. Five or two to five foot diving. It's the 4S series Strike King crankbait. Just a uh, nice little square bill on that fella. And you're gonna get a lot of reaction bites. Now that seems a little shallow. Where I'm fishing in Alabama, you can probably still get away with two to four foot. They're still probably up on the banks, up around some riprap um, feeding. Uh, but this shallow diver is gonna go away relatively quickly. And for most of you up north, is already gone. Y'all are actually starting to look at hard water. And it is, it's Chartreuse Sexy Shad. Wasn't too far off by saying, you know, whatever I called it earlier. But Chartreuse Sexy Shad, um, I like that. Um, I think that's gonna be a spring killer. It's just a little late in the fall for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, water temperatures hitting the uh, 50s and 60s. This thing's gonna absolutely murder them. Um, unfortunately, we're in like the low 50s uh, down here. So that that may that bite may be gone for us uh, at the moment, but I like that bait. I like the moving baits. And that looks like what we've really got in here. Up next, we have a Lunker Hunt bait. So we need to find the Lunker Hunt. It's gonna be this guy. It's a nice little jerk bait. We all know jerk baits work extremely well in the winter. Now, I don't like the fact that this one doesn't dive very deep. You can tell by the lip, it doesn't dive very deep. It's not your three sets of hooks. This is only a double hooks. Um, on your treble hooks, it's half ounce. It dives to six and a half foot at max, and it's a floating jerk bait. It's not a suspending. I really wish this would have been a suspending jerk bait. It does have erratic action. I like that half ounce. I like that. I think it's a little short, and uh, it doesn't dive deep enough, in my opinion. And I really wish it was flo or uh, not floating. I wish it was suspending. That's what you're going to get the bites on. So this one, while it's got a really awesome paint job, if it was a little longer and it was suspending and dove to probably about 10 foot, I'd be really into it. Um, this one is a uh, one I'm gonna save for later. Not exactly the water I'm fishing right now. Um, 
I'm actually gonna I'm gonna put this one last. I know a lot of you probably are gonna crucify me and say I should have moved it up one, but I'm gonna put that one last. Up next, we have a Z-Man bait, which is gonna be these guys right here. These are the Slim Swims. I'm um, gonna we'll pop these things open. It's just a little bitty. It looks like a basically it's a yeah it's a watermelon red. Um, I really like the watermelon red. I like the Z-Man products because of the Elastec. They just last much longer. It's a little bitty paddle tail. Um, Honestly, it's a little too small for me. Although, although, if you put this thing on a drop shot, you could actually you can actually rig a drop shot weedless. If you were to rig the, rig this, it's got a little indention there. Rig this on a drop shot weedless. I bet this would work out pretty well. Just forget the boot tail. I mean, I wish it was like a split tail. Although you could alter that if you wanted to. That on a drop shot would actually look uh, really yummy and be very comparable to the watermelon red we have in the drop shot over here. Um, I would not use this as an actual swim bait. I think it's a little too small. Um, just not, I, I mean, what am I fishing for here? Like panfish, so thin. Uh, I think uh, for sure you put that on a drop shot, uh, you're gonna be in business. I'm gonna move that to, s let's put it at second. I'll put it at second. Uh, that was really close between these two. Next we have, it just says mustad bait. That's not mustad. These aren't even mustad. Where's it? Just says mustad bait for three dollars, um, but I'm guessing that has to be hooks, even though these aren't mustad hooks. These are actually, uh, well, I don't know what brand this is. It just says standout. Anyway, this is actually a drop shot uh, hook, which is super super nice. Which would go well with what I think should be drop shot soft plastics up here. So it's a little drop shot hook. It'll tell you how to rig it on the back. You actually tie your line, you tie your little line right there and you feed it back through the eyelet um, and it will actually stand up for you as opposed to you know doing the palomar knot and passing it back through, um, which is works just as well in my opinion. This actually helps you keep that bait straight as your knot is tied to that little, that little shank right there, that little eye right there and then feeds through this eye. Just helps you uh, stand straight up. Um, put those things on there, I think it'd be pretty deadly. So that's a nice little addition. Uh, we also have one in here that's not mentioned. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pair that with that, uh, which makes that whole package a little bit sweeter, honestly. I actually have this, which is a blade bait. Um, it does, it's not listed on the card, as you can see. We're supposed to have six baits total in here, which one, two, three, four, five, should be six, but we got a seventh bait in here. Um, and it is a the original steel shad. So not too sure about the hooks. The hooks look like they're painted and when they're not actually silver, they're painted silver. It makes you think um, maybe not the greatest quality of hook. We're gonna vertical jig this thing, um, or at least that's the way I would fish it, vertically jigging it, almost like you would a spoon. That weight's gonna help it stay vertical. As you pull it up, it's gonna rip like a, like a rattle trap, uh, a wood through the water, but it's gonna go vertical. Spots, small mouth, largemouth, they all like this. It's a way that I really don't like fishing because you really need to have a really good uh, a really good fish finder, a really good unit to be able to find where the fish are and then you can vertical jig them. Um, and we're still trying to learn our units if you saw that video where we installed those on the boat. So I'm actually gonna put this, ooh, I'm gonna put it last just cause I don't do a lot of that kind of style of fishing but it's actually very effective. I just don't do enough of it. Last but not least, it says there is a secret mission bait in here and it's six to eight dollars and it actually tells you what you need to do. What it says we need to do this month is take a picture of our secret mission bait on top of our monster bass box and upload it to Instagram or Facebook. Tag the brand of the bait, tag monster bass. It, you could win up to a hundred dollars or win a hundred dollars, um, whatever. I mean, here's the thing. All you gotta do is take a picture of this, uh, which is a popper bait, which is, I don't know about you, but in the middle of December, I don't know that a topwater popper is really gonna get it done. Uh, you may get one really, really like fish that just doesn't know what time of year it is and doesn't have any sense of cold. Um, but you may be able to catch a fish on that, but this is your summer bait, man. This is this is gonna be your your spring, summer bait, fall bait, not winter bait. Not, definitely not a winter bait, but they include it in the box. Um, so I don't even know where to put that. I mean, that's that's gotta be, 
If you're going with how good the bait looks, I think the bait looks actually pretty decent. I really like the bait. It's just got a white bottom, which is what you really need to look for on these baits because, hey, this is all the fish are going to see. It's a topwater bait. Who cares what the top looks like? Look at the bottom. It's all right. It's a white bottom bait. For the time of year, it gets a big blank on my, in my opinion. Um, for the most part, the stuff is on point. This one being a media or a, a very shallow diver at two to five feet, that one kind of threw me for a loop, but the rest of them are kind of on point for the time of year we're in. Um, and they're safe. A rattle trap in the winter, a drop shot in the winter, a crank bait in the winter, a jerk bait in the winter, a blade bait in the winter. All of those make sense for the winter time. Like it's all completely appropriate for the winter time. However, they just kind of fail in execution a little bit because it's like, okay, these two make sense perfectly. Like the bait, everything about it makes sense. It's a three and a quarter. It can get a little bit deeper, but you can also fish a little bit shallower depending on how fast you reel it and how you keep the rod tip. The crankbait makes a whole lot of sense for winter, but it's just too shallow. The jerkbait makes a whole lot for winter, but it, it's not your three treble hooked jerkbait. It's a two and it's not a suspending. It's a floating and it's a little too shallow. It's like a summer jerkbait almost. These two make sense for the style of bait, but lack in the execution of the bait, if that makes sense. The blade bait makes sense in more than a million ways. I just don't fish them enough, so I put that at the bottom, but it's actually pretty appropriate for this time of year. Again, I just don't fish it. The only reason, this is completely biased is why it's at the bottom. It actually works really, really well. I just don't use it enough. If we compare that to the MTB box, I think that's appropriate for this time of year. Definitely appropriate for this time of year. So there's our two that are appropriate for this time of year. If we compare the crankbaits, this crankbait gets the advantage because it's a little bit deeper diving. Um, that's the only reason it gets the advantage. The shaky head, I think, gets the advantage over whatever else I have over here. I mean, it, there's really nothing else to compare the shaky head to, but I think there is four decent baits right there that would really work this time of year. Then you've got these two, which I really think that's a uh, spring, summer, fall bait, that swim jig. This is a, uh, you can use it in a challenge video, but don't actually, I wouldn't actually use this, like if I'm actually fishing and wanting to catch fish, I don't know that I'd use this thing. I think this is cheap um, and I think the hooks are cheap. I could easily change out the hooks. I just. I think this is garbage. I think this should, it's a throwback because it should be thrown away. It should be named the thrown away bait. It's like, there's some stuff that should work this time of year. There's one oddball and there's one that should never be used. And it's like over here, I've got these, which are like perfect fall winter baits. These, which are really kind of like summer baits. Like I, they both float. They don't dive very deep. This one's appropriate. I could put that one in there. I just don't fish it enough, but for the sake of the argument, I'll put it in there. The blade bait, I'll put in with those. This one is a, like a summer bait. That one doesn't make any sense. So all in all, we've got four items over here that are that are usable for this time of year. We've got four items, five if you include the extra wide gap hooks, which I'm gonna include in hooks over here. Five over here, which are, are fine. Um, this one would go in the good, but not this time of year. And actually this one would go in the good, not time of year. And then we've got our crappy one. So all things considered, I gotta give the slight advantage, the slight advantage here to the mystery tackle box this month. But I mean, just barely. These would have been, even just one of them would have been different. Like a little bit of, of a deeper diving crankbait or a, an actual like suspending 10 foot diving, you know, anywhere but really between seven and 10 foot diving, uh, suspending jerk bait that had three sets of treble hooks. If that were to go in that pile, I would give the advantage over here. I mean, really, really close, honestly, really, really close, but I've got to give the slight advantage to mystery tackle box this month, even though they threw in this terrible bait. Like literally, why would you spend $10 on this bait? You can get them for $5 on Amazon. Come on MTV. You got to do better than that. But at the same time, uh, this one's not a total wash, but if all things considered, the month you needed to have Mystery Tackle Box out of these two would be this month. I give the advantage over here. All right, so here's where I need your opinion on this. I need you to get in the comment section. Let me know how did I do on this review? Which one was better? Was it the Mystery Tackle Box or did, do you disagree with what I'm thinking and it's actually the Monster Box? 
Give me a reason why you think either way. Did I get it right on or did you have a differing opinion? Because honestly, this is the only way we learn. I've got my, my suspicions on these boxes and I say, well, based on my knowledge, Mystery Tackle Box wins this with a very small margin, but it wins this battle between the two for December. There may be some of you guys that know a secret that none of us know and be like, hey, no, that actual floating jerk bait actually works really well in the winter. I don't think it does. Give me your experience. Let me know why you would think this might be better um, if you refute what I'm thinking. Let me know in the comments. How did I do? Mystery Tackle Box, Monster Bass, you be the judge. So that's gonna do it for today's video. This was just a review of the two boxes. Um, it's gonna be something we do for the next couple of months. We've only got like three or four months of the Monster Bass. So we're gonna do that through the winter. Um, as always, go check out the Mystery Tackle Box video I uploaded just a few days ago um, and enter yourself to win this exact Mystery Tackle Box that we just reviewed. Um, I'm gonna ship that out on this day. So you've got till this day to enter to win it. And uh, uh, good luck. Uh, the rules are in that video, so go check out that video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Again, my name is Brett. I run the Be Fishing channel. We do a lot of fishing. We do a lot of bait making. Um, just a whole bunch of stuff. We've got a pond that we maintain. We're trying to get bigger bass in, so you can watch the whole progression of the pond. Um, we're finally starting to get some pretty decent sized fish in there, or what I consider decent, if you consider that most fish when we started were 10 inches and 10 ounces. So we're finally getting somewhere. Um, and yeah, just hang out, check out the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like the video, and leave that comment below. How'd I do? Anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully this wasn't too terribly long, didn't waste too terribly much of your time, and hopefully you liked the review because we're gonna do it a couple more times, and we'll catch you on the next one. That didn't work. I was gonna do like some kind of cool outro because you know, you're probably new and just checking this out for the first time, but I have failed at that, so later.